I'm here tonight as a determined American who loves our country. And my message to you is very clear. Wake up, America. There is no substitute for American leadership and exceptionalism. America should not fear our enemies. In fact, we should clearly define our enemies, face them head on, and then defeat those that seek to threaten our country and our way of life. You're darn right. That's right. Good for you. Tonight, tonight, we stand together as proud patriots who deeply love our country and believe in the principles of freedom, democracy, and liberty. USA, you darn right, get it going. USA, USA. USA, get fired up. This is about this country. This is about the, the future of our children. We know, we know that America, our nation, is the greatest country in the history of the world. Let there never be a substitute for America and let us sustain the conviction that our country holds a unique place and role in American history and American exceptionalism must never fade. But now it is up to us and you cannot sit this election out. I stand with you as a citizen a veteran, a patriot, but more important, as an American, to tell you, to tell you that the destructive pattern of putting the interests of other nations ahead of our own will end when Donald Trump is president. <clears throat> Trump, Trump, there you go. Exactly. <clears throat> from this day forward, from this day forward, we must stand tougher and stronger together with an unrelenting goal to not draw red lines and then retreat and to never be satisfied with reckless rhetoric from an Obama clone like Hillary Clinton. <clears throat> we must draw from the rich foundation of our founding fathers' fight for democracy and lead our friends and allies with more determination than ever before. With conviction, with conviction in our beliefs that pierces through the ideology of any people or any nation that attacks America, America's way of life, and our proud heritage of fearlessness and courage. <clears throat> tonight, tonight, America stand as one with strength and confidence to overcome the last eight years of the Obama-Clinton failures such as bumbling indecisiveness, willful ignorance, and total incompetence that has challenged the very heart and soul of every American and single-handedly brought continued mayhem, murder, and destruction into our neighborhoods and onto the world's streets. On this day, on this day, we start the beginning of a new American century, a time when we turn our heads forward with persistent and relentless focus 
on protecting our communities, our families, and our country. With our feet firmly planted on the ground and by holding individuals accountable for their actions equally and fairly, our new American century does not risk its future on political correctness and senseless hyperbole. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. USA. You, you got it. You got it. That's exactly right. It's about this country. It's about this country. That's right. The time, the time is now. The time is now to recognize our obligation that we have to the world. An obligation to lead the world with unwavering integrity, renewed strength, and unapologetic resolve. And with Donald Trump in the White House, we will make America great again. Damn right. America's once traditional, undisputed role as world leader is now in jeopardy. It's in jeopardy, folks. The Obama-Clinton duo, they failed our country by defying America's exceptionalism and betraying our nation's history and our founding fathers' revolutionary spirit that established America on the principles of freedom and democracy. American, American exceptionalism was a core principle when the United States led and won our battles. Under this doctrine, we led the Allies to victory in World War II against Nazi Germany. USA, 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 USA. I mean, God help us. Get fired up. You are right. I love it. I love it. We, we are the first country to put a man on the moon. We ended, we ended the Cold War. We ended the Cold War and we stopped, we stopped communism. We stopped communism's quest for world domination. As as Ronald Reagan said, as Ronald Reagan said, and I quote, if we lose freedom here, there is no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. <laughs> USA, I love it. You guys are great. A, a centerpiece of American foreign policy was once the protection of the United States and its people and interests around the world. Sadly, sadly, under current leadership, that is no longer the case. This cannot stand, period. We must recognize, we must recognize that America has enemies in our homeland and abroad. And our military needs to be capable of protecting the nation by finding and capturing our enemies. The president must have the tools to deal with all threats to this country and must have the guts to put them into action whenever necessary.
And Donald Trump is that leader. And I'm going to say that again. Donald Trump is that leader. We must regain our ability to truly crush our enemies and our soldiers. Our soldiers deserve to hear from their leaders with clarity and precision. Too often, way too often, our troops are instead by, are distracted by trivial matters. Trivial matters about what words to use, what terminology is politically correct, and what bathroom door to open up. My God, my God, war, war is not about bathrooms. War is not about political correctness or words that are meaningless. War is about winning. War is about winning. There is no substitute. There is no such thing as a runner-up, and there are no consolation prizes. A commander-in-chief does not draw red lines and then retreat. <clears throat> America, America does not back down from anyone or anything. Get that's right, USA. USA, USA, you got it right, baby. That is exactly right. Get fired up. This is about this country. It's about our country. We are tired of Obama's empty speeches and his misguided rhetoric. This, this, has caused the world to have no respect for America's word, nor does it fear our might. Let me be clear. Coddling and displays of empathy towards terrorists is not a strategy for defeating these murderers, as Obama and Hillary Clinton would like us to believe. and releasing, and listen to what I'm about to say, and releasing terrorists will not end this war. On the contrary, it simply emboldens the terrorists and it prolongs the war. Under Barack Obama, we have no coherent strategy to protect our citizens. And under Hillary Clinton, it will be more of the same. You got it right. I, I am infuriated when our president bans criticism of our enemies. I am certain, I am deadly certain, that we cannot win this war unless we are free to call our enemies by name radical Islamists and failed tyrants. <clears throat> because, because of Obama's ill-advised actions, the world has lost faith in American leadership and the threats are mounting. Radical Islam metastasizing throughout the world, lack, a complete lack of American military readiness
to face multiple fronts, untold cyber threats, demoralized allies around the world, a struggling, a struggling United States economy unable to compete with a burgeoning Chinese economy, growing nuclear capabilities of China, Russia, and North Korea, and loss of respect and confidence around the globe. We have become the best enemies and the worst friends. And I'm going to say that again. We have become the best enemies and the worst friends, and that has to change. These next four years, these next four years will be consumed by the perils that we now face. And the so-called red lines or reset buttons were utter failures. And the Obama-Clinton failed foreign policy list goes on and on and on. We need a commander-in-chief who understands these challenges and is willing to do whatever it takes to meet them head on. Our adversaries must never again mock American willpower, and we must never give them a reason to doubt our resolve to win. Thank you. The most, the most damaging example the most damaging example of the president's failure to understand the consequences of putting political expediency ahead of national security is the emergence of ISIS. We cannot continue down this path. More lives are at stake. Our very life, our way of life is in jeopardy. Our very existence is threatened. What keeps me up at night? What keeps me up at night is the sobering realization that evil exists. The radicalization of Islam and its barbaric cause that uses modernity to influence potentially millions around the world to join their cause should keep us all up at night. We must, we must, take seriously the possibility that these enemies have weapons of mass destruction and intend to use them. That is a very serious issue. We must understand and define our enemies if we intend to defeat them. America and Americans deserve no less. Because Obama chose to conceal because Obama chose to conceal the actions of terrorists like Osama bin Laden and groups like ISIS and the role of Iran in the rise of radical Islam, Americans are at a loss to fully understand the enormous threat that they pose against us. Now is the time for a leader that is honest and strong. A leader that's exactly right. A leader who will stand up for America and make, here you go, and make absolutely clear, and make absolutely clear that if you cross her path, you will pay the price. You got it. We, we do not need a weak, spineless president who is more concerned about issuing apologies than in protecting Americans. We, we do not need a reckless president who believes she is above the law. Lock her up, that's right.
Yes, that's right. Lock her up. I'm going to tell you what. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I use I use hashtag never Hillary. That's what I use. I have called on Hillary Clinton. I have called on Hillary Clinton to drop out of the race because she she put our nation's security at extremely high risk with her careless use of a private email server. Lock her up, lock her up. You guys are good. You're damn right. You're exactly right. There's nothing wrong with that. And you know why? And you know why? You know why we're saying that? We're saying that because if I a guy who knows this business, if I did a tenth, a tenth of what she did, I would be in jail today. So, so, crooked Hillary Clinton, leave this race now. She needs to go. Before, before I end, before I end, I will repeat my belief that American exceptionalism is very real. Let, let us not fear what we know to be true. Let us not fear what we know to be true. Instead, we should always remember that our country, our country was built upon Judeo-Christian values and principles. And instead, and instead, let us remember the sacrifices of those who have gone before us. America, is unique. America is the greatest country in the history of the world. So, you're darn right. So get ready, America, get ready. Now is the time to elect fresh, bold leadership. Trump, 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 let's go, come on. Get it going. We are just beginning. I promise you, I promise you that Donald Trump, Donald Trump knows that the primary role of the president is to keep us safe. He recognizes, he recognizes the threats we face and is not afraid to call them what they are. Donald Trump's leadership, decision-making, and problem-solving abilities will restore America's role as the undeniable and unquestioned world leader. He will lead from the front, not from behind. He will lead with courage, never vacillating when facing our enemies or our competitors. And he knows, he knows that the advantage, Donald Trump knows that the advantage in life, in business, and in wartime goes to the competitor that does not flinch and does not broadcast his game plan.
Hey, Donald Trump will execute the fundamental tenet of peace through strength. And there will be, and there will be no apologies for our American exceptionalism or leadership standing around the world. So once again, once again, wake up, America. You cannot sit this one out. You cannot sit this election out. Get out of your houses and get out there and vote. And instead, elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States of America. Thank you very much and God bless America.